Hey guys, this is Danny, also known as I Annihilate, and I'll be going over my favorite hero in Dota currently, and what I think is maybe top two, maybe even top one, mid-heroes in the patch, 7.35c, Ember Spirit. Uh, we're going to go everything from like when to pick the hero, item builds, skill builds. We're going to go over my in-game guide that you can go ahead and like or favorite or, or use in-game yourself. So um, you can browse all guides here. You might have to find it on the workshop even because it's probably not as popular as these other ones for now. But it'll tell you what to level up. It has these little ability guide like tidbits like Flame Guard level 2 clears the entire wave. 3 can clear big camps pretty easy if you have a stack. Uh, what to level most of the time. Uh, just like a quick guide. It gives you a little blurb on the items too, which is always nice. So... First off, I want to talk about when you want to pick Ember Spirit. So Ember Spirit is a really strong tempo-oriented hero. He ganks a lot. You want to be moving around a lot, uh, utilizing your remnants in the early game. You can even drop one mid, TP somewhere else, get a kill, go back to your lane and keep farming if you want to be greedy, or you can just TP in, remnant onto people, and get kills, right? There's a lot of op opportunities. His slight chains, so we'll just go over the abilities really quickly. So he has Slight of Fist, it's like Omni Slash that hits everybody once in a circle, including creeps. And he has Searing Chains, which will root three people around you in this circle. And what it looks like when you use them together, Slight Chains, I got these three heroes this time. Which is very nice setup for supports. Flame Guard gives you uh, a magic barrier, so let's see how I can block the blue bar is going down because I'm taking damage from Viper but you're blocking damage and you kind of get a Radiance Aura around you, which is quite good for farming. It's also quite good late game when you have your Flame Guard DPS talent. And I also tend to pick up the Flame Guard Barrier talent a lot, as well as like a Mage Slayer or something, get really tinky. But you do a lot of AoE magic damage for the most part. Your goal is to just stay alive as long as possible, cast Slight Chains as many times as possible. Um, and for the most part, just be setting up for the other heroes on your team. Just rooting people over and over again can help heroes like Medusa or Templar get a lot of attacks off. Uh, might force their Mantas to like escape and then you know they get hit by a silence or something. Just very annoying poking type of hero. So first, now that like the intro Oh, I guess I guess we should go over the ultimate too. So this spell causes zero mana the fire mana remnant part. It only costs mana when you activate it. So if I were to activate to this remnant, that cost me 150 mana. I can have multiple down, and it'll go to the one last that I click on, pretty much. So if I click over here, somewhere close to this remnant, I'll go to that remnant last. If I click near this one, it'll go to that one and that one. So you can do some cool stuff, like let's say someone's stunned and you're trying to get out. You have a remnant back here. You can drop both of them and even your, your chains on them and get out. It's all fine and dandy. Quickly, I'll go over the Ag Shard as well. Uh, if I were to die, so let's get a bunch of rapiers on Sniper. If I were to die, I drop a remnant down, I can buy back. Oh, all my heroes are dying. <laughs> and that's like the main usage of the of the shard. It's also kind of nice if you do have a decent mana pool and at least level 2, ideally level 3 remnant, to use it because when you get kills yourself, you'll get a charge. So let me give myself a bunch of rapiers now. So let's... Let's say I want, I use all of my flame remnant charges, I'll get one back if I kill him close to me. So it helps upkeep your cooldown. Pretty much that's about it. And then lastly, I'll mention the Aghanims. And some cool tricks you do with the Aghanims. Aghanims will let you go much farther. You can also chain the remnants together. Uh, I did a bad job of it there. Give me a little, a little bit of time to practice. So you have five remnants instead of three as well. And like I mentioned before, it you only have to pay this upfront cost once, depending on how many remnants you have down. So if I have a bunch down, this is only going to cost 150, not 150 for all the remnants. Which is cool, because if let's say you're trying to escape, you can pre-cast this remnant over here. And it just chains them together while I'm going, which is cool. You can practice this in a lobby. It used to be a little easier before this had a bit of a like cast uh, cooldown, but still very cool. Hey guys, just a friendly reminder. If you like this kind of content, uh, I plan on making a lot more content in the future. So go ahead, leave a comment for suggestions, feedback for future content, or you know, simply subscribe. Thanks a lot. And now we've gone over the abilities. 
Um, I'd like to talk about when you should pick Ember and when you should maybe lean towards not picking Ember. So I've assembled five heroes here. I, I can't really make more. There's a few others like Shadow Fiend and stuff that would also be annoying for Ember Spirit. Uh, but these are kind of more so the classic counters and heroes you'll just have trouble running into. So the lower the MMR, um, what, from coaching experience and just knowing some lower MMR players, uh, you'll see Sniper and Viper a lot. And those are heroes you definitely want to avoid or ban. Um, the higher MMR you go, if you start picking Ember early or in the second phase, or even if you're just spamming it a lot and people know you as the Ember guy, you're going to start running into Huskar last pick or Huskar, uh, the Huskar matchup a lot, which is very difficult. I plan on making another video probably covering some of these matchups, especially the Huskar one, because I get asked about it a lot. But you want to be avoiding these heroes like the Plague. These are the ones that are going to grief your early game. They're going to put you really far behind. You're going to have trouble rotating. And and like I said earlier, Ember's a tempo hero. You want to be ahead, stay ahead, and really put the like gas pedal on. Because your cooldowns are extremely low. And to build on top of that, the heroes that you want to see on your team for when you're trying to play this style right, are heroes that can utilize your chains. So something as simple as I slight chains, hook. Something, same thing with arrow or hoodwink spells or, oh, my chains was cooled on, sorry. Slight chains into Skywrath ulti. You have supports that really require setup. So not, not like a tusk, right? Not like a tiny. Those are heroes that have setup for you. You might want to pick something else. Could just still be a really good Ember game. Um, you also deal with Illusion heroes pretty well in general, so you can go. You can even go Radiance. You're going to get a Maelstrom most of the time. You have all this AOE magic damage, right? But you really want to pick this hero when you can enable your supports. They pick some range damage or heroes that require like setup, like I said, with the Pudge. And when you're not going to have a really tough lane like these heroes, that'd be my best recommendation. As far as skill builds go, because this can also lead into some matchup knowledge stuff. Um, I have written down in the guide a very basic skill order, and this is going to be your default. You're going to want to put three in Flame Guard as soon as possible, mostly because it gives you the option, as I've written down here, of killing big camps. Um, you'll see a lot of pro players or pro games, they'll go two in Flame Guard just to kill the waves, which I've also written down here, and then they want to max slight to kind of play really fast paced. In pub games, you're going to have a hard time sometimes trying to play that fast. Your teammates might be just sitting in their lane too long. Um, it might be hard to group up early and go for smokes. And just, I, I think even putting four points in Flame Guard can be really nice if you feel like the game is a little slow and you need to farm. Flame Guard is by far your best farming tool, especially once you have a Mage Slayer or Kai on. You can kind of upkeep the mana cost forever. And this is how you're going to like scale if you're not getting kills. However, if you are getting a lot of kills and you feel like you can gank a lot, let's leave this at two. Uh, maybe even leave this at one in some lanes if you're doing really well and max slight as soon as possible and chains. So, like I mentioned in the guide too, um, I, let me scroll up to the chains. I usually take chains at level four, um, and this gives you the opportunity to gank at level six. Let's say you were going um, like a somewhat popular build before was four in slight, two in flame guard, and no point in chains until level eight. That means you're going to delay rotating a lot of the time until you're level 8, unless you see a really easy kill somewhere with a teleport. And, like, I think that being ready to move around the map at between 6 to 8 minutes should be your goal on these spirit heroes every game. And you might just have a nicer, easier time doing that with this skill build as well. This skill build, however, has some downsides, right? Um, Sleight of Fist and Chains, those are the abilities you use to set up for your supports. So that's why people tend to like putting more points in them early. Uh, it's something if you're trying to do the hook and you have level one slight chains, it, it might be difficult to get the chains like slight of fist level one has lower AOE and, and stuff like that. It might be difficult to get the cast range to catch some people that are far away and it might make it a little difficult. You might want to be farming a little more anyway. But uh, again, the thing with flame guard, you can even make a jungle stack for yourself and you'll just get those levels quicker anyway if nothing's really happening. If you're against a hero, and I, I think I have it written down in here as well, so if they that can break your shield in the lane. So something like a Shadow Fiend, something like Zeus, something like Invoker's Cyclone, especially level one, Huskar's Q can block your Flame Guard. Do not level Flame Guard first, and oftentimes I just end up skipping the ability. If I have really active supports against Huskar, I'll just max Light and Chains right away. I won't even get Flame Guard because I won't bother with it. He can break it too easily. But if I'm against Huskar, I might go 
one point sleight of fist level one and then when i have two in flame guard i'll start trying to get some farm with it and i'll make myself a big jungle stack later with maybe even level four flame guard just to catch up that is a viable strategy you can also go behind the tower in that matchup like i said i'll, I'll try and cover these like difficult matchups in the future but this is just be an all-encompassing basic to intermediate maybe even some expert stuff thrown in guide for its more general knowledge um flame guard again it clears creep waves which is important it also clears creep camps so if you are skipping it and you're going max light chains, you're going to fall behind in a lot of games for not getting kills. As far as talents go, Flame Guard Barrier is phenomenal if they have magic damage. So let me get the barrier. Uh, let me even... I don't think I can... Oh, I can drop these. Perfect. Got a Mage Slayer. I'm going to give Dagon 5 to this uh, Death Prophet. I'm going to press my shield with the Flame Guard Barrier. I'm going to hit her with the... And I, I lost barely half my barrier because of the mage slayer component because of the flame guard barrier and that was an 800 damage nuke right so the way this this hero kind of works right now is a lot of time you're just rushing the mage slayer and playing around being really tanky with the flame guard going in against magic heroes if they have a bunch of physical damage um or you don't have that many points of flame guard you can either skip the the 10 talent for later or just get the damage talent and then the rest of the talents, honestly, you don't really have a choice. Uh, like, I would honestly, if I could, I would gray out the chains talents, and I would gray out the remnant charge talents the until you're post-25. Flame guard DPS, this just doubles the damage from your flame guard. It's just way too good. Um, it can clear ancient camps just if you just stand there AFK for the most part at 15 as well. It just does so much damage. Uh, Sleight of Fist hero damage. Sleight of Fist is, like, the spell you're already spamming the most. It does a billion damage. Chains target, like, yeah, you're going to cast chains every 10 seconds. Are, are you really going to get four people every time? Like, three is nuts, right? And then, again, the double sleight of fist. This is your best spell, getting to cast it almost twice as often, at least at the beginning of the fight. Like, the cooldown's the same, but you'll have a second second one, right? And that that's pretty, pretty straightforward. So item builds is something people struggle with a lot when it comes to these okay. sphere heroes, especially Ember. I'm going to try and cover it in here and then maybe even look to example, like show a few examples in the game. There will be an example game after this like like uh, rambly part of the video where I'm just trying to give as much information as, as quickly as possible. But your, your core items, okay. Or well, I guess we can start starting items. So mm -hmm. let me reset my hero. We can do it in game actually. That'll probably be easier. So you're gonna want Tango. The these starting items pretty much every single game. Uh, don't buy a magic stick level one. Don't don't do any any weird stuff like that. You really need to rush your bottle. Getting bottle by two minutes can make or break many lanes. The ward will help you secure creeps uh, because you'll be able to aggro or see if they're attacking and. Uh, you can also spot some ganks in the early game, especially on the water runes if you have a ward somewhere around here or here. And you're quickly going to be getting these items in order, sometimes stopping for the raindrop first. And I rarely, rarely, rarely get magic stick before I finish my phase boots, even the small stick. There are going to be some games I get it if they just have a hero that just spams a buck ton. Or if the hero... Um, is going to all in you. So these are kind of bad examples I have on the board right now, but let's say you're against a Pangolier, you might get into a situation where like some extra stick charges could save your life in a 1v1 fight to the death. Um, a lot of the people are actually going to buy magic stick against Ember, so you're not really going to ever play the mirror matchup, but something like a Huskar when they counterpick Ember, they always start magic stick if they're good, because Ember's going to be using a lot of slights to, to secure CS, and the only way Huskar can lose the lane is if Ember finds a spot where he's low enough to run at him and just go all in. And the magic stick gives him that huge safety net. Not the greatest laning item right now, because um, it gives no stats for CSing. And you're going to block more damage from having a raindrop and get a decent amount more. Like, you're just going to get more mana and health from raindrops than having a stick in your inventory 99% of the time. In, like, almost all matchups. Like... Obviously not against Pango or Monkey King. They do all physical damage now, but against a lot of the other heroes. Phase Boots, when you finish Phase Boots, that's when you're looking to kind of be more active. This helps a lot. So with Phase Boots, and I'll get to level 6, the, the obvious synergy is the Remnant goes 2.5 times your speed. So this is what a Remnant looks like without activating Phase Boots. This is what it looks like with Phase Boots. 
pretty big difference for catching heroes. On top of that, it just gives you damage and armor, which both benefit your Sleight of Fist, and it kind of benefits Slam Guard in a way, right? If you're more tanky towards physical damage, then being tanky towards physical and magic is, is like, great. You don't want to just be susceptible to, to physical. Then your build's going to look like this. I probably should add the magic stick in here, actually. Um, I'll change that in the guide as well before I post this. And I'll just throw this probably after the phase boots. Because I think you want a wand almost every game on this hero. It helps so much in the team fights for your mana pool. You're going to so many times where somebody's like one fire remnant off dying if I chase them and I just need like 50 mana and it always comes in clutch. Next up in the build, and these are the core items, so you're gonna, if you, in a perfect world, okay, you can get these items in order and have no worries. Shard, Aghanims, whatever. We don't live in a perfect world. Um, you're gonna want to buy the Mage Slayer in games where they have nothing but physical damage. So they have like TA, Sniper, Bristleback. Don't bother with the Glyphnir even. You can farm just fine with Flame Guard and Mage Slayer. Go straight for a Shivas. Uh, or you can stop for a Maelstrom, which is why I have both Maelstrom and Glyphnir in this part. Stop for Maelstrom and then finish the Shivas. Most games, however, you're not going to be threatened that much by their carry in the early game or carries. They're going to be just farming creeps. Um, rarely do I even see a TA mid or anything like that. And I find that having extra HP especially with the flame guard talent just from finishing glyphnir and it also just makes your maelstrom do more damage it gives you the active it's it's like a perfect item in my eyes for ember is much better and then going for the shivas after and even at shivas like shivas buffs all your damage a lot too right because it has the veil component in it these are your three big items and unfortunately like i said we don't live in a perfect world almost always before i've even finished like more space on the floor. Almost always I'll have these two items, and then I'll need to get a Kai Assange, because they buff this item. It's very good against lots of lockdown. The status resistance at 25% is great. It's a little cheaper now. Or they have silences or roots, something like they build an Orchid, because they see a spirit hero. Orchid's got a lot cheaper now. Or they have roots, something like a Naga or a Troll. You're going to have to buy a Yule Scepter, and then maybe they have Duel or, or Doom. Those are two heroes you want to buy Lincolns against every single game. So you might just be sitting there stopping for these items a lot, and that is okay. Radiance can also be great against Illusion heroes, like I mentioned. If you have Radiance, the Flame Guard talent, and your Shard on the floor for the DPS, good luck like having an, an Illusion hero being on your screen. You kind of sit next to your supports and keep them alive and kind of zone away the, uh, the Illusion heroes like that. And then lastly, um, and there's a little item like right up for each of these. I wouldn't consider Disperser in too many games. It is a very cool item, and I, I just thought I'd mention it as another way of dispelling. I think it's better than Satanic. Like if you already have Manta and Yules, or, or you don't want a Manta, you'd rather have the Disperser for whatever reason, because may maybe you want to cast on your teammates. It'd be great. BKB, only get this against Long CC, so like long cooldown CC, like up coil, or e even something like a Sand King ult. Sand King's not that popular right now, but you can block all the damage from it. Use it more as like a damage block slash long cooldown block. Otherwise, you're just way better off just being tankier or having Kai Assange. And then the last section of this item guide is items that can help you in the late game. If they have other spirit heroes on their team, like a Storm or they have a Puck or something, you're probably going to have to pick up a Hex if nobody else has one. Um... Upgrading your Yules to a Wind Waker can be phenomenal against the level 25 Puck Coil, or if you're in Spaceless Void. Stuff that, like, kind of can save your team or yourself against long cooldowns as well, if you don't have the BKB or, you know, what have you. Refresher, more Remnants. That's all you really want it for. Um, there's plenty of games I'll play with Ags and Shard, and I'm just killing everybody and chasing them, always out of Remnants. And if I just had, like, a double BKB or ten, five more Remnants I, I could carry... Very rare to go that route these days because of the nerfs to the remnants, but another option if you do just need to cast more spells, which is, you know, the goal of your hero is just cast as many spells as possible, is a late game Octarine Course phenomenal. 25% more Searing Chains and Sleight of Fist, and, you know, even your items, stuff like that, gives you tankiness. It's great. There are going to be some games that go like two hours long, right? In those games, this is what the other items are for. You can even replace your boots with travels at some point, too. Uh, don't be shy to do that if the game is really late. Like really, really late. 
most of the time just TP and remnants enough mobility for you. Getting Daedalus and Revenant's Brooch. Revenant's Brooch is really cool. I've even seen a build that's kind of, sort of, maybe going to be a thing. Uh, I didn't want to necessarily include it in this video because this is like the standard build. There is some people going like Kai Assange, Radiance, Revenant's Brooch and stuff. And it, it looks kind of cool, but I, I'm not too sold on it so far. But uh, Revenant's Brooch is awesome with Sleight of Fist, especially after the recent change where they decrease the mana cost and it doesn't consume mana for attacks from abilities. So you won't use any mana on Slight. And you, if with double Slight 25, Daedalus and Revenant's Brooch, you do some really cool things. Or even just Rapiers and, and uh, Revenant's Brooch. Your but yeah, I'm not going to ramble on too much longer. That covers pretty much everything you'd want to know about Ember that I could think of in the general Your sense. I'll try and cover some more matchups in depth and shorter videos. Like, I don't want to make, like, one super long video where I go, okay, this is what you do against Huskar, this is what you do. But this for the, the trouble matchups, like the ones over here, we can probably make some short-form content for that. And yeah, I'm going to pass it over to myself in the past where I went over one of my own games. And can you can kind of think... See the thought process and how it plays out in an actual game when you're doing this build. So yeah. Alright, this will be the example game for 7.35c Ember game. Or uh, Ember Guide, sorry. Uh, this game was uh, quite the comeback, so I can talk about some cool stuff as well. I believe I laned against Storm Spirit in a very classic matchup. Uh, a lot of things in the matchup have changed over the years. Um, they've buffed and nerfed the damages on Static Remnant and Overload. They've buffed and nerfed the amount Flame Guard can block. Essentially, if you get hit by two Remnants and two Overloads, you're probably going to lose your Flame Guard unless you have a Raindrop. And... What you're trying to do is, if he static remnants, you want to slide into the creep wave to dodge it. We'll probably see that a couple times. For the most part, it's a ranged, it's ranged hero favored. He can poke you a lot as storm, and you can't really come close to hit him back because he can hit you with a remnant. But the one thing that kind of makes this matchup quite balanced is, if storm oversteps, you can punish him really hard. He can usually die. So in this lane, much like the guide. Uh, I will be getting Flame Guard level 1, and I'm just going to cast it right away in this matchup. Sometimes you want to wait until the creeps get a little lower, so you can kind of bait in uh, some denies. So, like, let's say I waited for one of the creeps to be deniable for, for me, and then I ran with Flame Guard. It forces him to run in and tank my Flame Guard, but I don't really want to get remnant in, and he can secure the creeps anyway, so... Just pushing the wave into him, as you can see, if I pause real quick, he took quite a bit of damage and I didn't, which is great. I'm just trying to limit how much damage I take. And the lower Storm is, the harder it is for him to play aggressive on me, because, like I said, the, the balancer in this lane is, if he's low enough HP, I can just walk him down. And if he's near that threshold, he can't tank the creep as much to poke me. Whereas if the HPs are swapped, right... He's full, and I'm I'm the one at three quarters. He can play so aggressive. He can tank creeps. He can just it just kind of snowballs how much harass he can put on you. If that makes sense. So a lot of aggroing back the creeps. Uh, I got my flame guard pop there, which kind of sucks. Dyer's courier has been killed. Be very comfortable with last hitting under the tower as Ember. A lot of lanes are going to be you push a wave into their tower, then it pushes back into your tower. Uh, something that, you know, being comfortable with will help a lot. So dragging the creeps back, getting that range creep with Sleight of Fist. That's kind of your backup plan when you don't have Flame Guard up, is you want to try to split the creep wave. You want to be doing that most of the time by now anyways. And what I mean by that is you want to drag the melee creeps back so that the range creeps are both dying to melees. Because as a melee hero, you don't mind tanking these melee creeps. But as a range hero, Storm really doesn't want to tank the melee creeps. So there's, there's where you can see again, um, sorry, that wasn't very good English. There's an example of what I was talking about earlier where I made him remnant the creep wave and then I slide a fisted into it and I didn't take the damage from it. Stuff like that is really good. Uh, I felt really comfortable in this lane, so I didn't go the raindrop first. I think it's non-stock for another 30 seconds anyway, but getting the stick first is fine. 
I still have one of my starting tangos even, which is, you know, a decent amount rare for this matchup. And that that's another good example. Um, I'm going to rewind and show that as well. So you can see, like, when the range creep on my side is getting low, I run into him with the flame guard, right? So this creep is going to get deniable. And this is kind of how you can abuse flame guard a lot of the time. They don't want to walk into your flame guard because they can't trade against it. And you can just zone them off the range creep. If they get greedy on it, you're going to kill them. So that's also another bonus, but... It kind of secures this range deny, the fact that I was flame guarding at him. You want the creeps to be as far away as possible, pretty much, a lot of the time. On Ember. So, game is a complete disaster in the early game. Like I mentioned, this is a big comeback game. Um, I don't even remember what the score was. It might have been 20 to 2 or something at some point. Kind of fast forward a lot of this early landing now. It's just going to be trading farm. Both of us can't really kill each other anymore. Got my Raindrop, my Blightstone, now I'm gonna work on Phase Boots and uh, Mage Slayer. So will just speed up a little bit. Important when you're playing mid lane to not panic when your side lanes are going really badly. You want to look for opportunities to help them, but not at the cost of your own game. If you're the only one having a good game, it doesn't make sense that you should sacrifice your good game to try and help the other team because or try and help your team because if it doesn't go well you instantly lose and you're the one here on the team that'll be strong enough to kill them if they overextend so i think we'll get a good example of that this game of like how patience can pay off uh, i know that it's hard to be patient if your team is yelling at you and stuff like that too or they really need help if i was a different hero like puck i could probably already start helping like with coil but on ember it's really hard until you have like some more levels level three flame guards okay but how am i going to chase a wind ranger down with that it's going to take some really specific situation i don't remember if i get four in flame guard this game yeah it's so i think in the guide i have get three some games it's fine to get four and just farm too i think it's a little rare um, I usually adapt my skill build based on the game a lot, but I think like I mentioned earlier, if you just get three points in it every game, you're not gonna go you're not gonna go too wrong with that. Radiant structures are fortified. Using remnant to secure the rune. You can see the net worth too, like I'm free farming, but I'm not nowhere as farmed as the Wind Ranger is, and even Magnus is beating the Morphling quite badly. I think Underlord was trying to give up already by now, and just playing for my timings, waiting for an opportunity, waiting for them to overextend. We have all our towers still, so uh, there will be some plays where they dive the tower, and I, I think this will be one of the first ones. So you can see that Wind Ranger used her Wind Run aggressively, right? So had I tried to rotate to this Wind Ranger's lane, she would have it up defensively and I probably wouldn't be able to chase her down. But when they're making an aggro play under the tower like this, and rest in peace Underlord, this is my like opportunity to actually you know get a return kill. And like, that's a billion golds. I'm rich now. It doesn't help Underlord too much. Um, he's still going to have a really tough time. But, again, you're not trying to, like, level out your, like, I don't want my net worth to be 5k and Underlords to be 5k. I want mine to be 7k and Underlords to be 4k at this point. I want to be the one snowballing and then he can just catch up. It's much more efficient if I can just get all my gold first and then help him get his gold later. It's always harder to deal with one really farmed core than two decently farmed cores. A little trick you can do on a lot of the camps too, like I was double farming this with Flame Guard. A lot easier to do on this side with these two camps, or these two camps, these two camps type of thing. But it's something you want to keep in mind on Ember, just for efficiency. Another cool stuff you can do with Slight, like uh, I can show that again too. About to get charged, just Slight a Fist into it. 
most of the time when you want to dodge a slight, let's say you're in Queen of Pain or Avenge Spirit, you need to be sliding into the projectile because the sleight of fist doesn't last too long. Or remnanting into it. You can't like remnant backwards and dodge an alchemist stun or something like that. It'll just chase you. So yeah, firing both these at once with Flame Guard. Diving top again. I have no TP. It's been unlucky. Good RP dodge. I don't say so myself. Unlucky. And this is, again, this is like worst case scenario type of game. But just to show how, how high of an impact you can have, even in these really bad games, remember. Make sure I'm scaling. I don't remember if I farm these now or later. No, I get them now. No, I don't get them. Okay. <laughs> Keep in mind, though, while stuff is at least going on in the map, Warfling's getting to hit some creeps, you know? He's doing okay. Oh, this is a good turnaround, I think. Yeah. So now Morphling's caught up. I think they built something like three orchids this game. Let me check. It's been a few days, yeah. So, uh, again, like I think I have in the guide here, good versus orchid. They have three of them, so I had to buy a Yules. Uh, something you don't want to fall into a trap in in Dota is you see core items in order. You don't want to just go, okay, Mage Slayer, Maelstrom, Glyphnir, Shivas, and then I get the situational items. If the situation's happening to you, you're going to have to deal with it immediately. So, orchids. In the early game, you're pretty much exclusively going to get Yules because it's how cheap it is. If now, if it's like a 40-minute Orchid, maybe you have enough gold to get one of the more expensive dispels. Uh, or not, just not even worry about it. Maybe your team can dispel you. But they barely had a window to use their Orchids on me. I have a Yules already. We'll get to see how big of a deal that becomes in some of the fights, too. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Oh, oh these these like feeds are just help so much. And now they have to take a four v five fight. Another cool thing that you might have seen there is I used the remnant during my sleight of fist. So depending on where you are uh, in your sleight, that'll be where your hero actually is for your remnants. You can cast a little farther or in a different direction. Which is kind of cool. So just continuing on with core items, doing the double, double camp farming. Farm, 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 farm. Even without Maelstrom, he farms so fast just from the mana regen and the debuff from Mage Slayer. So just keep that in mind as well. Easy save from the Orchid there by having a Yules. Just farm, farm, farm. Always scale in Dota. I've shown up in every single fight and engagement. Like, I have 100% kill participation, but my CS is still good, and I'm always farming in between that going on. You don't want to just be waiting around or, like, forcing stuff all over the place, even in bad games. Killing the supports first is usually the goal in, in team fights. So Spearbreaker dying first is huge. Uh, they're gonna get our revenge, which you know a little unfortunate, but oh, I'm gonna die. But Superman showed up. That fight was still great for us. Another just Orchid session. It's always important to leave a Remnant behind, unless you're trying to play super aggressive. This would be another good team fight to look at. So I see I dodged into the Spirit Breaker thing. Didn't get a Maelstrom proc on that Wind Ranger, unfortunately. But that's a good example of like how to dodge the spell with, uh, with Remnant. You want to go into it.
bad. And despite how bad the game started, right? Like, it's already slowly climbing back into our favor. Probably just gonna dip even further. Number one tip on any hero, especially spirits that kind of need to play with the pace of the game, is to just don't do things that'll make you fall behind. Don't chase too far for a kill. Don't wait 30 seconds in the trees in the early game to try and set up on their offlaner. Get kills quickly, go back to farming. Be in and out of the fights really quickly. Stuff like that. So I believe I went for the Glyphnir and then the Lincolns. This game I did not get a Shiva's. Um, unfortunately, I need another situational item, right? And I, I talked about this earlier, just going over the guide. It's like, you want to get all these items as quickly as possible, but... Shiva's is quite the expensive item, and I really need the Lincolns for Shackle Shot, for Spirit Breaker Charge, Spirit Breaker Ult, even just blocking some of the Orchids, they have three of them, right? Your number one goal on Ember is to cast as many slight chains as possible in a team fight, and they know about that, so they're going to try and orc and kill me. If I stay alive, I'll just get more spells off, that'll do the most damage. I can't remember exactly, so we'll see after I finish Lincoln's if I go for an Aghanim's next, or... Just go back for the Shivas, but both are both are good options. Even just getting some random items could be okay. From the luxury section. Oh, I got the shard first, I like that. Lincoln's is pretty far away, and when I get enough money, I'll be able to buy back into the fight. That's something I kind of forgot to mention earlier in the guide, is the main benefit to the shard, other than getting additional remnants or the damage on the floor or illusions, uh, is you die in the fight, you can buy back. It's kind of got gives you like a free teleport back in because it spawns a remnant on your death. Buy back is like incredibly important. Thirty minutes plus when it comes to Roche fights, these are the fights that start deciding the game. If we get a big fight now, we're gonna crack their base. They're gonna be dead for so long, or they're gonna have to all buy back, right? So we're pretty all in on winning fights at this point. Not looking for like solo pickoffs, even though I guess this guy's giving us one. Yeah, like two heroes dead for 80 seconds, right? Windrunner has no buyback, we're gonna crack the base. Hopefully. I don't remember exactly the entirety of this game. Yep, we cracked the base. And again, if I die, it'll leave a remnant on the floor. I now have enough gold to buy back, so we if you don't want to just instantly buy back either, make sure it's good, but you have having the option makes the game really comfy. Got it. They focus you first and use literally everything, you buy back and team wipe them. That's GG. It's so hard for Storm to play against multiple roots too, like the the Glyphnir and the Searing Chains. He has nothing, no dispel. Just gets rooted and that's that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's too much more to this game. I believe we just wrap it up at this point. So... In summary, make sure you have a nice early game if possible, Ember. Those games will feel really easy, even in a hard game. Like, I'd much rather my teammates lose their lanes than me lane at Huskar as Ember, for instance. So just keep that in mind. Like, your lane should be pretty important. Uh, snowballing and getting out of the lane is also really important. And if you noticed, I didn't die once remnanting in, which is something else that you want to keep in mind. Don't chase too much on Ember. You really want to stay in the back and just cast as many slight chains as possible. 
and use your remnants to finish kills, not to chase a lot of the time. And yeah, I think that's it for the Ember Guide. Uh, I'm going to piece this together now, and I hope you guys enjoyed. I know that probably not all of you got to the end of the video. If you did, say hello or something. Um, thanks for all the subscriptions and views. Appreciate it, guys. Take it easy.